what is up folks here with budget monk and welcome to the continuation of my how to own is byzantium in 1.28 the intention of this video is to help those of you who have already expanded and reconquered your land if you need help doing that make sure to watch the first part just in case you're here and you haven't seen that part yet with that being said i'm hoping that the tip here in this video will help you guys have a game as good as i did where i achieved my personal earliest great power status within 24 years as the nation of Byzantium, which is pretty badass if I do say so myself. But with no more further ado, if we jump back in time here, guys, to 1445, I want you guys to take note of just how early I began improving relations with Janda, which is going to be important, especially if they are hostile because they actually desire Constantinople. In order for them to fall out of the hostile status, you're going to need to maintain plus 50 relations. Now, upon defeating the Ottoman Empire, this is not going to be difficult whatsoever, especially if you defeat them as decisively as I did, and your economy is doing really well, as you can just give them a gift, for example. Jumping forward in time, you're going to find it much easier now to actually ally Jandar, assuming you have positive relations, uh, because of the size of your force limit and that's actually going to be a significant thing to do in my case Jandar and Theodora were rivaling each other which is something is that is very likely to occur in order to obtain that alliance with Jandar you're probably going to have to break your alliance with Theodora if that's the case however with that being said you don't want to ally Jandar but instead you're free to do whatever it is that you like up until the point that the Ottomans declare war on them now from my experience the Ottomans are very aggressive and even if you whooped them around a little bit and they're feeling very vulnerable, they're very likely to actually declare another war and to kind of climb out of debt via conquering other nations and taking their gold. In my case, I actually took advantage of the fact that Serbia was under attack by Venice and he had no allies willing to back him up as he was still a valid rival. And I am a huge proponent of showing strength under these circumstances, declaring wars on your rivals when it's a free victory to use that show strength piece out giving plus 100 to each monarch point but also 50 power projection and it's quite likely that this would actually occur in your own game as well it gives you something to do in the meantime which will also build your prestige and your army tradition for example and i do recommend that you guys do this yourself so needless to say that was an easy victory and jumping ahead in time here again the ottomans have in fact declared war on jandar so there's one thing that's going to be crucially important for you to do guys and that's to make the Anatolian coastline high priority. By making these provinces provinces of interest it means that Jandar or his combined alliance are much less likely to keep the occupations and allow and instead give them under your control. It also allows you to actually you're basically indicating to Jandar that you do want to conquer those provinces and he's much more likely if he's peacing out and you've contributed the majority of the war contribution he's more likely to actually hand those provinces off to you. Believe it or not guys this is basically the move it's just allying Jandar and being called in against the Ottoman Empire. So before we continue on with like any tactics on how to actually defeat the Ottomans from the circumstance let's talk about the strength and the benefits to actually making this move. After winning your initial victory over the Ottomans, you're going to end up with a tremendous truce time. And this is cutting into that significantly being pulled back into a war against the Ottoman Empire. Naturally, another advantage is actually keeping the pressure on the Ottomans and not allowing them to recover, especially when it comes to acquiring more coastal provinces and building up a larger navy. In my case, I do take some of the Anatolian coastline and you might wonder why is that? The main reason is because if you actually declare war on the Ottomans the old fashioned way and you 100% them, you're going to find that the entire Anatolian coast combined is actually too much war school cost to fully annex in one single war. And that is another reason that this is a tremendously good move. By taking some of these centers of trade, for example, on the Ottoman side, it's going to allow you in the next war after this, your third war, to actually annex and complete that mission in one foul swoop. All right, so let's talk about tactics as far as actually winning the war itself. It's not going to be that difficult naturally. You're still going to be sweating over the previous war. And what you're going to want to go ahead and do is declare war and pick off some of his navy right off the bat. Keep in mind, of course, you do have Jandar's navy and any other coastal nations that he is allied with. So upon defeating some of his navy, at this point, he's going to, it's going to make it basically impossible for him to actually cr cross the strait. And therefore, you can fully occupy the Balkan side with no issue. Next up, you're going to want to go ahead and cross the strait yourself and make those occupations on the forts in order to be able to separately piece out and take a substantial amount of land or something else accordingly. 
Now, some people might think that uh, if the Ottomans have ticked up ahead of you, for example, and if you compare the force limits, uh, this might be a risky war to actually undertake. However, even if Jandar is on his own, you might be surprised as to how easy this war can become as long as you can secure that naval victory. And the main reason is that the Ottoman force will be split into multiple stacks because it's so large at this stage of the early game. So as long as you are able to defeat one of their single stacks by yourself, you can basically own this war with ease. And the tactic that you will use if you're struggling is to actually allow them to walk to the only objectives they can walk to, which is your forts across the strait. Then you're going to go ahead and isolate them by blockading the strait. You're going to accumulate all of your troops defeat that army as it's now isolated and then you can simply stack wipe that entire unit the tactic that you want to use is pull your navy into your province and then defeat the unit allow it to retreat out and then pull your navy out again into the strait to intercept them and actually prevent them from crossing the strait they will then instantly be stack wiped most likely due to having zero morale if they do somehow survive you just do the same approach rinse and repeat and this is the reason that you can absolutely, and this is the reason that you can wreck the Ottomans in this war as long as you win at sea, guaranteed. In my case, however, it just so happened that I was able to walk onto their forts. They were distracted, sieging down my allies' forts, and eventually too sort of afraid and intimidated to actually engage me. They went to sort of base race a little bit, and I was able to peace out with these. Some of you guys may think, really, is this the move? It seems a little bit underwhelming. You just get back into war with them somewhat earlier and you can take some land, but it's at the cost of Diplo points this time because it's not an offensive war. The major thing by jumping back into a war with them and creating that awful headache type scenario again is prolonging the amount of time that they seem completely and utterly vulnerable. What you will find is that if you prolong this state of affairs from the first episode to this episode and going into the future, it's inevitable that the Mamluks will attack them as they seem so vulnerable. In fact, the only reason that they probably won't is because they're fighting their own war. However, if you keep this up, it's inevitable and it will happen. What also will happen is that whether Karaman declares his own war against the Ottomans as they begin to look more and more like food or not, the Mamluks will most likely return core to Karaman in order to weaken him. So it's funny, it's like an alternate reality where in this case, the Balkan side is unified by ourselves as Byzantium and the Anatolian side becomes fractured and Balkanized, giving you many opportunities with Janda, Karaman, the remnant of the Ottomans, for example, opportunities to expand with different truce timers amongst the different nations. Either way, you can see that this war is going along swimmingly, and I'm going to go ahead and jump to the piece out here. So what I decided to do here is simply humiliate rival as well as take one full state over here, uh, taking the current Ottoman capital, which actually has improved trade and so on, making me the dominant force in this region of the world already. That only costed 64 Diplo points, which is uh, really not that much at all. Of course, like I said, we showed strength earlier in this session here against uh, Serbia which counteracts that alone and there we go guys that's pretty much it from this point onwards I feel more emboldened to actually achieve other things like take on Venice with that extra trade income and coastal provinces and the next war against the Ottomans is going to be an absolute breeze as he's going to be nice and fractured going into the future otherwise guys I hope that this video helped you out I know that it basically hinges upon your success with the first video but either way it's a pretty humble little advice here in this video but it goes a long way I assure you this is in my opinion by far the most well optimized way to actually play from this position and I wish you guys the best of luck again just doing the same promotions as last time guys make sure to join my discord if you want to become a holy bro a member of the holy broman empire uh, the link is down below as well as i'm going to be streaming as of 2019 i'm really hyped and looking forward to it and i hope to see you guys there thanks again i'll see you next time